Several years ago, I started researching my uh, dad's side of the family, his family history. And uh, I wanted to know more about his family because, first of all, um, his dad died when I was two and a half. And, uh, and I really never knew, you know, much, very many of um, his family other than a couple of aunts and cousins. So I was just interested and curious and wanted to know. And in that research, I found out that I was related to a gentleman by the name of William Henry Shoemaker. Now, um, William Henry Shoemaker, um, you know, was actually born in July 10th, 1842. And he's my great-great-grandfather. And I do know that it kind of sounds strange to be able to say that someone born then was my great-great-grandfather, but my dad was the seventh of eight children born really late in my uh, grandfather's uh, life. And it's probably why my grandfather died when I was two and a half. And my daddy didn't start having children until he was well into his 30s. So therefore, he was my great-great-grandfather. Now, in my research, I also discovered um, someone online by the name of Portia. Now, she was related to the same gentleman. Uh, great, it's her. He's her great-great-great-grandfather on a different branch of our family. Um, see, because my great-grandmother, Mary Jane Shoemaker, married my great-grandfather, William Cloud. William M. Cloud. I'm not sure about the middle name. There's a little bit of um, confusion when it comes to his middle name. And I've seen it in two different places with the S one time and with the uh, M in another place. So I'm not really sure of my great-grandfather's middle name. Shame on me. But uh, on the other side, the, there was a Nancy Shoemaker. And I don't remember what her middle name was. Um, she married a Franklin cloud which was brother to the William so that's how the same branch is related to the same because two sisters married two brothers practically but back to my great-great-grandfather William Henry Shoemaker now um, when he was young his when his mother died his father uh, bonded them out to other people I guess he couldn't take care of them and found them homes and bonded them or something. I guess they don't do that nowadays. But suffice to say, um, he ran away when he was being mistreated, so he has no record of any family. And um, he did go to war, and he was in the uh, Confederate Army. Um, and uh, when he was at Cumberland Gap, his... Uh, Brigadier General, um, let's see here, and I'm finding out this information on that lady I told you about her website that I was related to. She has a website where it has all this information on it. It says uh, he was taken prisoner on uh, September 9th, uh, 1863 at Cumberland Gap, Tennessee, um, without a single shot being fired. It says that uh, the Brigadier General John W. Fraser, while under the influence of a great amount of liquor, surrendered the prisoners, surrendered um, his whole region, I guess. And um, so anyway, not a single shot was fired, which is kind of cool. And it says that uh, my great-grandfather was sent to um, Camp Douglas in Chicago, Illinois, and he later they moved him to another um, prison that was in Kentucky. Now, when the war ended, he ended up remaining in the Cumberland Gap Kentucky area. It says that he bought land in Cumberland Gap and lived there before selling it and moving to worst um, Harlan, Kentucky. Um, so and another thing about my great great grandfather William Henry Shoemaker is that he was actually a Reverend William Henry Shoemaker, and uh, he was a Baptist preacher of about uh, six churches between the years of 1890 and 1911. He would travel uh, around to the different churches. The circuit preacher, actually, is what this is called. And uh, he actually even um, became the pastor of the uh, the Baptist church where my uh, family ended up uh, growing up, uh, Locust Grove Baptist Church. But um, he um, would uh, travel around to the different uh, churches 
to preach. And uh, one Sunday, um, one of the churches, you know, hadn't paid him the Sunday before, previous Sunday when he had traveled there. And this time when he came, he told them, no pay, no preach. Which was, uh, means he was quite out, you know, standing. I mean, he uh, knew, you know, he, he'd say what he wanted. <laughs> And uh, one time someone invited him to dinner, and uh, the lady said, well, come and sit down, but the food ain't fit for a dog. So he refused to eat the food. Uh, so my great-great-grandfather must have been some character. Um, it also um, tells that um, shortly before he died, he dreamed about a young man um coming through a door and falling down dead and then later that evening when he went outside and he came back in he collapsed and died because so that's kind of strange he died dreamed of his own death and I say that's kind of strange because I've had dreams where I've had premonitions before and that leads me to believe that he had premonition dreams the same as me. Well, in Kentucky is, of course, um, where um, my great grandmother met my great grandfather. Now, I believe my great grandmother was born in um, somewhere in Virginia, Scott County, Virginia. She could have been got born in around in Cumberland Gap area. I'm not sure. This uh, page article doesn't tell me, and I haven't actually researched that side of her, just um, of the family just the cloud side so um anyway uh i have a picture that i snuck from this website of my great grandfather i'm going to post it here at the end of the video um now i do know that my mom's side of the family is from a little place called eola which is probably not far from middletown kentucky so that's really kind of cool. I mean, I can remember growing up, and we would be driving from North Carolina to Kentucky, and that would be one of the routes we would take. We would drive through Cumberland Gap. And um, anyway, I can remember, you know, going on under that big train, you know, and going up the mountain. And I knew, I just knew, whenever you saw the sign, you started going up that way every time I got there because you knew that the trip was almost over because it wasn't going to be that much longer to get to my grandmother's house. Once you got there, and um, so that was a significant point, uh, you know, we you know always remembered because it was a point where you know the long trip was almost over, and um, the signs towards Jenkins, Virginia, is one that I always remember watching for. See, because while my grandmother did not live in Jenkins, Virginia, she lived equal distance in a different direction um, as Jenkins was, so we knew that it was pretty much about that many miles before it was. Uh, we had to get, you know, to my grandmother's house. And um, so I always loved going through Cumberland Gap. And you always saw Cumberland Gap on the highway and all that every time. That's always the road we took. And it's really interesting to learn that my great-great-grandfather actually um, lived there for a while and was in there when the war was there. And uh, that's about all the facts that I have right now. But if I find any, anything else... I'll share that too with you. So I'm going to say bye now and uh, add on the picture to the end of this video. So bye now. Here is the picture of my great great grandfather with his two daughters, uh, my great grandmother Mary Jane Shoemaker and her sister Nancy with his, her, their mother, his wife.